Hey guys, and welcome back to another episode of Home Automation at Home. This is a series where I show you guys how to build your own home automation systems so you don't have to go out and buy the professional units out there that cost hundreds or even thousands of dollars. In previous episodes, I've shown you guys how to get the ESP8266 modules up and running and programmed through the Arduino IDE. And I've shown you guys how to connect them to a Raspberry Pi so that they can all talk to each other. In the last episode, I showed you guys how to hook up a Teensy 2.0 to monitor various things like temperature or doors getting open and closed in your house. And in this episode, we'll be adding one more module. We have this module here, a light module connected to this lamp. And we will also be installing a web app for home automation. So this home assistant application. And this will allow us to not only monitor the various things going on in our house, but also to control various things in our house, like lights and outlets. So the first thing I want to show you guys how to do is to get Home Assistant up and running. And then we'll take a look at the new code that we have to put onto our various modules. So let's get into it. All right, so here we are at the Home Assistant webpage. And it's very, very simple to install. You do need to have Python 3 in order to install it. So if you don't yet have Python version 3 yet, go and install that first, and then come back to this point here. And all we need to do is put in this pip3 install home assistant. So I have that here on my terminal, and I will install it. All right, there we go. So now Home Assistant is completely installed. And before we get into the configuration, I recommend opening and launching Home Assistant first. So we have this Haas-open-ui. So I'm gonna go ahead and launch that. All right, so now I, I launched it and then I just closed it right after I've, I've finished fully opening. And all that that was doing was just setting up some configuration files, just putting some files in the default locations. So now that that's been run, you're welcome to shut it off. In fact, you should shut it off so that we can configure it for our own system. So the configuration folder for Home Assistant, if you're on Linux, will be in your home directory under .home assistant. And in there, you should see a configuration file. I actually already have my old configuration, new configuration, and there'll be a database log and a lib folder. The file that we're concerned with is this configuration.yaml. And this is where all of the config for home assistant lies. So let's take a look at that and get that set up for our own system here. All right, so here we are at the configuration file and I've already filled it out for some of the things that we'll need. You are of course welcome to take this and pull it off of my GitHub and change it up to whatever you need it to do. And so there are a couple things up here at the top that we just have here as sort of base pieces. So we can name our home assistant. I've just named it home. You can give it a latitude and longitude, and that's for if you want to track the sun. I have those commented out because I don't need those. And we have a temperature unit and a time zone. And then the logbook, I think all that does is enables or disables the logging of events that happen. So you're welcome to turn that off if you want. Uh, history, that maintains a database of all of, anytime there's a change, it lets you actually look at like a graph of the temperature as it's changed. So I like to keep that on. Updater, just checks for updates for Home Assistant. Conversation, I haven't used this at all. I've left it on for you guys if you, if you want to mess around with it. I think Home Assistant can take voice commands, which is a pretty cool feature. So if you guys want to check that out, let me know how it goes in the comments. 
and the front end is the web page. So this is what enables it to have a web page broadcast that you can access and control. Now I've added just a very simple little password here for our web page. It is still HTTP, there's no encryption or anything, so if you do wanna open it up to the internet, you wanna open the ports on your router, make sure you, you use encryption and have it all set up so that nobody's easily able to penetrate your system, at least. Down here, it's a little bit confusing, I know, but it's pretty simple. So after we've defined and set up our password here, we then we set up our, our MQTT broker. So I'm assuming that this is going to be running on your local host on your Raspberry Pi or whatever your broker for your MQTT is. So we're using 127.001. And the port, the default port for MQTT is 1883. So we leave that as it is. And we give ourselves a friendly name, Home Assistant-1. And the Keep Alive, it's not super important that you know it, but what it does is basically make sure that Home Assistant, every 60 seconds or however, whatever you set your Keep Alive to, pings back to the MQTT broker to say, hey, I'm still here, whatever I'm subscribed to, send me messages from it. And then we have our three sensors or three interaction items. The first thing that we have is our sensor one. So there are different kinds of sensors, sensor, binary sensor. You'll see if you take a look at the Home Assistant page and you look under components, it shows you what different kinds of items you can have. So we have a sensor using MQTT. In fact, all of ours are using MQTT. And its topic is house slash temp one. And this is our temperature sensor, obviously, and we're measuring in Fahrenheit, and we'll give it the name temperature. Our binary sensor, i.e. our door sensor here, so I've given the name door sensor, also using MQTT under house door one, and it's using its payload of on or off is one or zero. So in the previous episode, we had our hardware device, our hardware monitor, receiving either a one or a zero and interpreting that to turn the light on or off. Same thing right here. We're just giving, telling it what the payload to say the door is open or the door is closed. So those are our two sensors. And then we've just added our light here. So we have, again, MQTT and we're going to name it outlet one because it's not specifically a light, it's just controlling an outlet. And the state topic, so we, we now actually have two topics associated here. Unlike the sensors, we only have state. We have a state topic and a command topic. The command topic is when you push to turn it on or off on your phone or on your computer, it sends to that topic. It either sends a one or a zero to that topic. The state topic is just like the binary sensor here. It's receiving, it's waiting for confirmation back from the light to say, oh, yeah, we've turned on. So that's all that is. And then down here at the bottom, I've made a little group for all my sensors, so I call them home sensors. And we have our door sensor, our temperature sensor, and our outlet. And the Home Assistant website has great documentation explaining how to set up all of these if you have something that's not a binary switch or a sensor, or you want other groups, you want to know how to set up groups, it's all really, really well laid out, and that's why I'm actually showing you guys Home Assistant today, rather than some other pieces of uh, home automation software that I've used. So now that we have a good view of Home Assistant and how it's being configured, let's take a look at the code changes on the Arduino and ESP side. All right, so starting with the Teensy, so this is our little home monitor, we have added a, another pin to monitor whether our light is turned on or off. So this will actually flip on a little LED whenever we turn on our actual light. And we've set it as an output because it's an LED. And then really there's no significant difference to the code here. We have another module, so L, 
another header for L for light. So we've added that to our check here to see whether we have a valid header. And then down, once we have actually read and seen that we've gotten a serial command, so we've gotten two bytes, a header and a payload, I've added just one more little chunk down here at the bottom, and it's asking if we have a header byte of L, so our light topic. And if the payload is one, we turn the light on, and if the payload is zero, we turn the light off. So very simple, really not much change to this code at all. So let's now take a look at the next step here, which is the ESP conduit. So this is the ESP8266 module that is connected to the TNC and also is connected to our MQTT broker and basically acts as an MQTT conduit for our TNC. So we've added another topic called light topic and it's set to our light one confirm. And this is to monitor and check when our light has been turned on or off. So just as we were looking at for the Teensy to see whether or not the light is turned on or off, well, here's where we're actually checking for it at the broker side. And again, we've added our, our light topic to our list of subscriptions to our broker. And then up here in the callback, I've changed a little bit of how we're doing things. So we're now, not only are we taking our topic string and converting it into a string object, but we're also taking our payload, which is just a, an array of bytes, and we're converting that into a string object as well. And that's going to help us out a little bit, and I'll show you why. So down here in our temp topic, or in our, yeah, our temp topic here, we're no longer sending our payload as just the raw binary. So previously, our temperature sensor sent information just as a raw binary, the number 65 or 80 or whatever it was. Now it's actually sending it as a string, as text. And this is because Home Assistant, well, it doesn't really like to just receive a binary 65. It actually wants the numerals 6 and 5. So we've adjusted our, our Arduino, our ESP code here to account for that. And this is where we're using our payload string object and we're just doing a string to int conversion. And then we write T for temp and we send our temperature through byte descent. So that's the change to temp. And now the change to light, well, we didn't have light before, so we're adding it. And we're going to check to see whether the string is equal to light topic. If it is, we check our payload for 1 or 0. If they are 1 or 0, we set our byte to send to 1 or 0, and we send it to the Teensy. So again, not too much changed, a little bit of tweaking of the code, but all in all, pretty simple. And here we are with our temperature node. So this is the one connected to the Dallas temperature sensor. And we really haven't changed anything except for this chunk of code here, which rather than, again, sending the raw binary, we're actually converting it, we're creating a character array and doing a conversion from our float to a string. And then we are sending that string along to the MQTT broker. So this converts the binary 65 to the num numerals 65 that can be interpreted more easily by Home Assistant. So here we have our new node, our light node, which if you've been following this series from episode one, this code is actually all demonstrated in episode one, how to make it all run and work. So if you're wondering how the light node works, go and check that video out. It's pretty similar to a lot of our other nodes, except the callback is being used to actuate a relay. So in the callback, the only thing I've actually changed from the code in episode one is our light confirm topic, which is still slash house slash light one, light one confirm. The only thing we're changing here is that rather than sending on or off, we're actually sending one or zero back to our confirm topic. And that's so that Home Assistant can more easily understand it and deal with it. So that's really the only difference here. So yeah, that's 
all the code that we have to deal with for this episode. So now that we've taken a look at the code and we see the setup for Home Assistant, let's check it out again all up and running together. So I'm going to open up Home Assistant here on the terminal. So again, H-A-S-S dash dash open dash UI. We're going to launch that. And on the Raspberry Pi, it is a little bit more laggy. It is a little bit slower to launch Home Assistant than it is, say, on a Mac or something like that. Uh, I am using an original Raspberry Pi Model B, so maybe on the Raspberry Pi 2 or 3, it, will be, it probably will be much faster, but it takes a couple of seconds to load up here. So now that Home Assistant is all loaded up on the Raspberry Pi, all you have to do to access Home Assistant is to go to the IP address of your Raspberry Pi in your browser. So mine is 192.168.1.222, and it's on port 8123. So if you go to that port, it'll load up Home Assistant. And you can see that from here, I can turn on and off my light, and I can monitor my door sensor. So if I put a magnet near it, it turns off, and when I pull the magnet away, it turns on. And the temperature, which updates every five seconds, we can see will go up when I hold it. 69.4, and it'll probably go up a little bit more, 69.5. So you can see it's really easy to set up, and it even works on your phone. So like I was showing you guys at the beginning of the video, you have a home, home assistant on your phone and you can turn your lights on and off through there and see everything in a really beautiful interface. So, and lastly, you can also note that I have my little light here. So when I turn the light off, that little LED turns on and off. So yeah, that's it for this episode of Home Automation at Home. You can see we're now really getting a lot of different modules and everything all working simultaneously. And again, you can add as many of these modules as you want. It's really as easy as just copying and pasting the code and changing a couple variables, changing a couple of your topic names and all that. And you can have multiple temperature sensors, door nodes, light nodes, whatever you want to make and have it all running and running through your Raspberry Pi or whatever other system you have running your broker. If you like this series, definitely like this video and check out the rest of the playlist. And if you like these videos in general, definitely subscribe to my channel. If you guys have any comments or want me to do anything specific in future videos, also let me know in the comments or shoot me a message on Twitter at It Kinda Works Inc. And you can also find my website at itkindaworks.com. So take it easy and I'll see you later.